Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name's Colton, and I like to talk about Bibles, books, and theology-related things. Uh, before we get started with this video, I wanted to point to you a podcast I recently did with Luke Daly. It's called The Focal Point with Luke Daly. Um, it was a lot of fun. I did a little interview with him. I have no clue why he cared enough to want to talk to someone like me, but uh, had a lot in common with his brother and just had a good time. So I'm going to have that interview link down below where we get into some stuff that maybe I've not addressed on this channel. So if you want to watch that, it'll be down below. It was a good time. Today, I want to address a topic that uh, kind of springs out of my video on Spurgeon and something I said that um, I think rings true with me and I just wanted to press in a little bit more to it and talk about the concept of the affections when it comes to theology. When it comes to knowing about God and knowing God, I've noticed in my own heart even that once you really start, you know, reading your Bible consistently and maybe you get interested in theological things like you want to pick up some books to dive a little deeper and things like that. If we're not careful, we can sort of drift into where I at least what I would call where I've been a cold orthodoxy. In other words, we really want our theology to be right. We want to believe the right things about God, and we should. That's a good desire. But in so doing, sometimes God becomes an academic exercise to us. And I think that that can be problematic when not checked. I think it is healthy and good for a Christian to seek to raise their affections for God in their study of him in their reading his word and they're desiring to to know deeper things i think it's a good thing to do that and earnestly desire to raise your own heart's affections in the process and i want to talk about that in a little more depth here quickly before we do that let's give some some biblical context to this so you know that i'm just not you know trying to give my opinion here in the gospel of luke this is coming from chapter 24. After our Lord Jesus' resurrection, he meets with two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus. And they begin talking to him about Jesus being there and dying. They don't recognize him in his resurrected body. And they're, they're bummed. They're down. They're like, they, they, they've crucified him. And we'd hoped, this is what they said, we'd hoped he was the one to redeem Israel and just kind of down in the dumps. And then Jesus, of course, at this point, they don't recognize him as Jesus, but he tells them, and this is um, Luke 24, verse 25, it says, And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning him. So Jesus rebukes them and then opens up the Bible to them, opens up the scripture to them, and begins to teach them all the things concerning him from the Old Testament. They eventually recognize him. And I'm going to read in verse 30. It says, When he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Now this, for our topic today, look at what it says here. In verse 32, They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Their affections were raised, clearly here. And so I think this is a biblical concept. It's a good thing, and we should desire our affections to be raised. I want that. Every time I read my Bible, I do want to feel, not just know. But I want to talk about 
healthy and unhealthy or bi- really biblical and unbiblical ways that happens. Because when we talk about the affections being raised, we talk about it biblically that it, it's something that we should desire, I, I think, but also something that tends to just happen from continued seeking and, and desiring to truly know who God is. There is a danger, and, and I would warn against it, in trying to manufacture affections, in trying to make affections happen and force them to happen by doing strange things. And some examples of that would be things like, you know, really trying to manipulate people's emotions with certain mood type things, you know. There's a whole discussion around this about how much is appropriate, how much is not as far as setting a mood in church and all that. I personally subscribe to the Second London Confession. I affirm what is called the regulative principle of worship, which means we just simply seek to worship God how he's commanded us in the Bible and You know, we're not going to try and force an atmosphere in our worship services with, you know, fog machines and laser lights and stuff like that. I'm not trying to get into that now, but the point is manufacturing, raising the affections, I don't think is helpful. However, I do think it is a good thing for Christians to be seeking it from God and his word. And when we worship him, when we hear his word preached that we should be praying, Lord, fix my eyes on the truth and stir my affections to love the truth. I think that's incredibly helpful and, and good. It It's energizing to me. So I recognize the danger in some of the um, raising the affections in, in a way that might not be helpful. But I do think it is helpful for us biblically to want to to desire that we know God and our love for God, our affections for God be increased. And I think scripture gives us more than one example of that. Old long dead theologians like Jonathan Edwards, uh, you know, he has a book called Religious Affections, which I highly recommend you read slowly because Edwards can be hard. He argues a similar thing, you know, that his goal when he preaches is to raise the affections of his hearers, not through manipulation, but through biblical truth. So really, that's all I wanted to talk about is I I think we as Christians can tend to veer in the danger zone when it comes to the head and the heart, that we can either try and be all head and it's all what we know and it's, it's simply just collecting data. Or we can try and be all heart, and it's all about feeling and how we um, feel about any given situation. That also is dangerous, because then it's, it's just purely a slave to emotion. But when we agree that we need to use our minds to study and know what is true but also seek to have our affections raised by that truth, not by a manufactured thing. That, I think, is what biblical Christianity, biblical worship looks like. And it's not always going to be a roller coaster downhill. It's not always, you're not always going to have the feels all the time. There will be seasons where it feels dry, but that's where we keep seeking and we keep praying and we and we confess to the Lord, stir my affection. I want to worship you with my whole heart. I want to obey the greatest commandment, which is what? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what I desire. I think that's what Christians should desire. So... This has been a talk on that. If you tend to lean one way or the other, let's think about that together. Let me know in the comments if you've dealt with, you know, sort of either end of that spectrum and what maybe what's helped you kind of level out to where you view things more biblically, where you realize that you need both the mind and the heart. You need both knowledge and affection uh, when it comes to knowing who God is. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this, watching it. It means the world to me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the things that help the channel out. I greatly appreciate it. 
and I'll catch you in the next video.